just as often used for calculations regarding decision problems. In particular, game theory favors using chess as an example, and for good reason. Chess is, in its particulars, a very mathematically predictable game, even as the game itself, the progression of a particular game, may not be predictable. The options presented at any given point in time in a game of chess are discrete and quantifiable. It can be easily determined how many possible moves are available at any given point and there is distinct calculable desirability for each of the available options. In the original opening move of a chess game, each side has precisely 20 moves available to it. As pieces move and restrict the movement of other pieces to a lesser degree, the number of possible moves expands. This expansion of number of possible legal moves expands until endgame, at which point attrition has limited the number of pieces and is continuing to limit the number of pieces from which a player may select. This predictable pattern in the progression of number of moves that will be available given the limited allowable range of each piece does not necessarily mean that a given game is predictable. While at any given point in time, the ratios present and the strategic possibilities presented by a given move, that being the shifting in ratio between pieces protected versus enemy pieces threatened, while these are quantifiable at any given point in time in the game, this is not to say that a game of chess is predictable. It is, however, worth noting that the distinct quantifiability of the strategic evolution of the game and the limited number of moves possible at any given point in time in the game is one of the prime reasons why we have had more success programming a computer to play chess than we have any other game. Kasparov accused the programmers of Big Blue of explicitly coding the chess engine to counteract his strategies, when in point of fact such a thing is not strictly speaking possible. The vagaries of the human mind are beyond a simple algorithm. The distinct mathematical possibilities presented by a given configuration of a chessboard, given a specific limited range of operation on each piece, a specific calculable strategic desirability for every available move, and distinct and calculable win conditions. Given these factors, a computer is well positioned to meet the criteria for a master. It has been said that the novice chess player sees their next move. The experienced chess player sees their strategy, but the master chess player sees only the board. Let us consider a different game, known by many names but most commonly known as Go. Go is played on a grid board of sizes varying from 9 by 9 up to 19 by 19. In the first move of a Go game, on a 9 by 9 board, a player has 81 possible moves. On a 19 by 19 board, they have 361 possible moves. Here we are showing only a small portion of a 9x9 nine nine board. Pieces are placed upon the board in order to outline or capture territory. While it may initially seem that the additive process through which the game progresses would mathematically limit the number of moves as one progresses, this is not the case. And this is where the true complexity in the game lies. Let us, for the time being, presume that the area marked here is the entirety of the board, and that these lines represent the edge of the board. Let us now say that it is the white player's turn. 
we see that white has one, two, three, four possible moves in this turn. The configuration of the board is changed and we find that black is also in the position of having four possible moves. Although variations on the rules would prohibit moving here and possibly prohibit moving here. In this particular case, we see that white player's turn has severely limited the number of choices available to the black player. Let us return to the previous board configuration and instead assume that it is the black player's turn. Again, the configuration of the board has changed substantially. In many games that focus on capture, this would be the end of the game. This is not the case in Go. In Go, a game continues until both players believe that the game is finished. With this board configuration, white has several possible moves. One, two, three, four, five. These are but some of the possibilities and variations presented by a very, very limited example of a Go game. Unlike chess, there is no predictable progression of probability from opening game to end game. The capacity of a single choice, of a single decision, to completely reconfigure the probabilities and possibilities presented by the board preclude predictable deterministic mathematics. This is perhaps one reason why no one has yet been able to code a Go playing computer program that can manage to play at the first dawn level, or in more familiar terms, at the level of an entry level tournament player. There remains an unclaimed prize of $100,000 should anyone succeed in coding an engine capable of playing the game at the first Dan level of proficiency. In Go we find that even though we have distinct quantifiability and a smaller number of initially presented variables than chess, for example there are no special movement rules for individual pieces. There are no exceptions to this rule like en passant or castling. Every piece in a Go game follows the same rules of every other piece in a Go game, and there are no exceptions. Even though the number of initially presented variables is much less than chess, and much more within the range of calculability, we find that the structure of the game, and in particular its responsiveness to human choice, precludes easy quantification or application of probability to determine the outcome of a game, or even the outcome of a particular move.